Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Microsoft Innovative Educator Spotlight Series podcast. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Welcome to episode four. Today, we have a great teacher on, a special education teacher with more than 10 years of experience. We're going to be talking all about the ways that technology can be used to teach our exceptional learners and how we can do so using all of the great technologies found in Office 365. Before we get to that interview, I want to talk about some of the neat things that are happening. Of course, I want to remind you that there is a Skypeathon coming up here on November 29th and 30th in celebration of all the great things that are happening in global learning and global education. There's, of course, three steps that you can use to go and participate in the classroom. You can head on over to Skypeathon.com. You can join the educator community. Very, very easy and free to do. Step two, you can find a classroom or an expert to connect with over Skype. And I got to tell you, once you hear our conversation today with this very awesome teacher. You're going to want to check her out and Skype with her. She is an amazing teacher in Georgia. There's another hint for you guys. And of course, step three is you can see how to get started using the Sway. We're going to link that Sway in our show notes here. And I hope you have a chance to participate. Last time we did a Skype-a-thon, they had over three million miles of Skyping back and forth between classrooms and countries. Don't just think inside of our country. Think outside of our country. In fact, again, when we're having our discussion and later on, we're going to hear how she took her kids all the way to Norway to Skype with some Microsoft people and how her students absolutely enjoyed it. So check that out. This is Skypeathon.com. That's S-K-Y-P-E-A-T-H-O-N. And also what we're going to be doing and talking about this week is the first and third Tuesdays of every month, we have our Microsoft Education Sponsored Tweet Meets. On the first Tuesday of every month, we're using the hashtag OneNoteQ. And on the third Tuesday of every month, we're using the hashtag MSFT. EDU chat. That's Microsoft EDU chat. These are great opportunities to meet people, to communicate, to get to know each other, and also to share valuable resources. It's also a great way to participate as an MIE or a potential MIE. There's, of course, several great ways that you can do that, but this happens on the first and third Tuesday of every single month. Check that out again. We have all the great information out there. One of the things I would encourage you guys to do if you're listening to this show is to subscribe to our podcast. This is our fourth episode. We had some great guests on um, in our first few episodes, and we are going to be continuing this with amazing educators just like yourself. There's, of course, several great ways that you can reach out and be a part of this and all of our shows here. You can find us on Twitter at TeacherCast and follow all the great things happening at Microsoft Education at Microsoft underscore EDU and at OneNote EDU. All of our shows here can be found on our new website, teachercast.net slash M-I-E Spotlight. And what I really hope that you guys take a moment to do is to check us out on YouTube, and on iTunes, and subscribe to our channel, and even give us a rating and a review. That is the best thing that you can do out there as an MIE. iTunes works wonderfully with audience participation. So the more reviews we get, the higher the rankings we are. The more ratings we get, the higher in the rankings we are. So you can check us out on iTunes over at teachercast.net slash MIE audio and MIE video is our YouTube channel. If you're interested in being on the show, we would love to hear from you and love to spotlight the great things happening in your classroom. You can do that over at feedback at teachercast.net. So several great ways to participate here. And again, we want to have this show be completely interactive and focusing on you, the Microsoft Innovative Educator. My guest today is a special education teacher with over 10 years of teaching experience. She is a Microsoft innovative educator, a Microsoft Surface educator, and also a PBS digital learning media innovator. And she is absolutely fantastic to be around. I want to introduce today Miss Lauren Pittman. Lauren, welcome to the show today. Welcome to the MIE Spotlight Series podcast. Thank you so much, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I am going into my uh, 10th year of teaching. Um especially for SPED. So this is, you know, that's my passion. Um, I am excited to see what this year will hold. It's my second year as an MIEE. 
Um, met some great people, had some wonderful experiences, and I'm just excited to see what this year will bring. I know we met uh, briefly, I think it was, out in Denver last year at uh, ISTE. We had a fantastic time. What was your thoughts about ISTE last year, and did you enjoy yourself at the forum? Oh, I loved the forum. So I think it was great to be able to see all of those people in person. You know, everybody has their kind of Twitter personality or, you know, where they'll post in the Facebook group. But being together, um, you know, in one place and, you know, the hunt was fabulous and just being able to make those actual physical connections instead of kind of that social media side was great. I, I echo everything you just said. It's been really, really cool getting to meet everybody and, and especially now doing the show. It's like, oh, wait, I... I I'm in that person's Facebook pictures. That's kind of cool. We, I know. We met, we met each other. And I agree. The hunt was fantastic. In fact, the other day I was talking to Robin about, you know, what are we going to be doing next year for the hunt in San Antonio? And she's like, I'm not going to tell you yet, but it's going to be fun. So I'm oh. certainly looking forward to it next year. And I'm pretty sure that question that nobody could answer will still be there since he wouldn't yeah. give us the answer. And it was kind of making me mad. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. If you don't know what we're talking about, I urge you guys, check out the MIE program out there. Um, applications come out generally in the springtime. And um, if you are uh, selected, you have a chance to you know go to ISTE and participate in the, in the MIE forum and meet amazing educators like Lauren here. Lauren, let me just ask you, what does it mean to you to be a Microsoft Innovative Educator? What has it uh, provided you as a teacher? Well, I think it provided me with the most important resource, and that's people to connect with. Um, I think if you're going to make a technology journey in your classroom, it's great to have people that you can reach out to, people who will support you, people who have walked that road ahead of you. Um, and I just, I mean, I love the people aspect. I've met some wonderful people. Um, this year, I'm um, uh, co-leading the Georgia Southeast 2 region with, you know, the unbelievable Sandy Adams. Um, you know, so it's kind of been that experience of, continuing people on their journey as well. And um, the people at Microsoft are just so fabulous. Um, they're a great group, and, and I'm honored to, to be in MIE. Now, the one thing that I will tell people about if they do go out to the forum, you have the opportunity of getting your picture taken with uh, Flopsy. Could you tell us a little bit about Flopsy, um, and, and why is Flopsy the quintessential MIE? Well, I think I had the ultimate Flopsy experience with uh, Richard Snyder. He was my uh, hunt group leader. And uh, dear sweet Flopsy, you know, she's just hanging out in her one note cape. And, um, you know, she's the she's the MIE hashtag queen. <laughs> hashtag MIE queen. I love that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so let's just start uh, kind of going down the educational path here. You are a special education teacher for the last 10 years. Tell us a little bit about that journey. How has that changed you? And what is it like to be a special education student, uh, teacher working with amazing students? Well, I think um, the thing that I love the most about it is um, helping these students find a productive struggle. Um, a lot of these students, their educational experience hasn't been positive. They've had to battle a lot of mountains. And for me to be that person that can kind of step in and be there for them and help them kind of navigate that path, you know, that's that's why I do my job. Um, that's why I've always done special ed. Um, and, you know, watching them have moments that are positive, that are life affirming. Um, you know, that's, that's why I do what I do. And I love my kids. I mean, um, you know, I'll be in a weird situation next year when the group I've had for three years is going to the middle school and I won't see them again. So it's, it's kind of that, you know, watching them grow, watching them learn, and then watching them move on to, to bigger and better things. When you're working with kids um, that have learning difficulties are there tips and tricks that you would be able to offer um, teachers that might not have those experiences? I mean, I know there's a lot of teachers out there listening to this program that are working with classes that are mixed. I know there's teachers out there that are working in special ed for the first time. What are some of the things that you think about every day when you walk into those classrooms? Well, I think you have to remember that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, you can't you know, just start off running with them. It, it takes a slow process. You're not only having to help them move forward in their education, but you're having to help them move forward emotionally. A lot of these kids, you know, kind of have this mindset of, um, you know, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. And then they'll kind of hit that shutdown zone. Um, so, you know, slow and steady wins the race. And then I think just giving them 
the opportunity to set the bar high, a lot of times, you know, they've only been able to meet the the very bottom of what's been set for them and pushing them and supporting them to kind of extend that bar up higher and higher will help them build their confidence at the same time. Recently, you wrote a blog on the Microsoft Education website. We've got it linked here in our show notes. Tell us a little bit about your experiences using technology. And I don't know if the word is adaptive technology or just, you know, the the technology that we have here. But what does technology like OneNote, Office 365, enable you to do to reach those goals and to meet your kids where they are? Well, I think using it as an instructional technology standpoint, um, you know, let's be honest, we all have those kids in our rooms, they're disorganized, uh, you know, they literally need you for everything. They need you to read the directions, they need you to read the question, they need you to read the answers. And so when you give them a tool like OneNote that not only keeps them organized, but also has the capability of the learning tools, you're allowing them independence. Most of these students have never been able to do things for themselves. you know, even working in a group setting, um, my kids can now take um, OneNote and the learning tools and listen to all the material and actually participate in group discussions rather than just sit there and kind of let everybody else be the workhorse. Um, you know, you're talking about kids that um, technology may be the only thing that they're good at. Maybe it's Minecraft. Maybe it's, um, you know, something else that they that they play at home. And now you're allowing it to be able to access their education and you're giving them a tool for success. And and in what ways can we use these tools? Um, you know, obviously with OneNote, we have, you know, inking, we have text, we have audio. What kind of strategies with these different tools are you finding successful and how can we implement them in our classrooms? Well, I really like the instant feedback in OneNote, um, especially for my math students. Let's say that we're working on something like um, triple digit addition and one of them has made an error in regrouping, I can stop them immediately. We can address the issue and then the student can move forward instead of them turning in an entire assignment where maybe they've missed a step or they didn't hear the directions right. You know, So that kind of instant feedback is really powerful. And I really love being able to create my own textbooks in OneNote. Um, so when my students are learning a new science topic, I can actually create them um, you know, kind of a well of information that they can tap into all the time. They'll actually share it with their friends um, when they're working in group or if we're doing a group project. So, you know, it's kind of that accessibility um, piece that I love the most. The other thing I love is um, being able to keep all of my stuff in one place so I can grade all their work in one place. Um, I'm not having to take home lots of paper and that kind of thing. So I think it's a twofold win for both. Talking today to Lauren Pittman. Uh, you can find her on Twitter over at Pittman's Place. That's P-I-T-T-M-A-N-S Place. And Lauren, of course, this being October, we're celebrating uh, Dyslexia Awareness Month. I believe that's the right way of putting that. Um, tell us a little bit about your experiences working with uh, our young students who might have challenges in their reading departments. They are my absolute favorite group of students to work with because they really do um, make some of the biggest gains. And they're the ones that you have those like, you know, tearful moments or those aha moments. Um, You know, they kind of have to battle their own Mount Everest in a way, um, you know, kind of defined middle of the road. We're not even talking about, you know, exceptional at this point yet, but watching them just find middle of the road, um, be able to push forward and know that they're capable um, I think for a lot of students with dyslexia, it's it's more of a confidence builder um, that you kind of have to to battle against along with the educational piece. And they're um, you know they're they're my favorite kids to work with. Now, when you're working with students who have the reading challenges, do you use a lot of the tools in OneNote, such as the audio recorder, or you know any of the inking tools, or what strategies have you found really work for them? Well, I think the most powerful one has been the learning tools itself. Um, the immersive reader has the option to turn on a screen display that can be personalized for each student. Um, a lot of these students like um, inverted colors, so white on a black background, um, blue, yellows, things that are um, a little less harsh for the eyes to pick up. Um, putting something on a stark white piece of paper and then handing it to a dyslexic student is like handing them the sun. You know, they they have a lot of time visually discriminating. And so the learning tools being able to customize spacing, uh, text size, text font, 
um, the display background, and then being able to just turn it on with a click of a button and turn it off the same way, that's really powerful for them. It's something that they know they can access quickly, it will work, and they can access it now on multiple platforms. Um, so even if we're not working in OneNote and we're working in Word, they can still use it there as well. You know, I'm, I'm curious with, you know, you've been doing this for 10 years and obviously technology has changed. Has it gotten easier for you as an educator with this, you know, inventation of brand new technologies or is it just different? Has it gotten harder because now you have to bring devices into a class and maybe teach those sk skills in addition to life skills? How has the uh, technology changed? improved or not improved your classroom? I think it's greatly improved my classroom. I think the one thing to remember is that we do live in a digital age. I mean, students are more computer savvy now than they were 10 years ago. I mean, I'm more computer savvy than I was 10 years ago. Um, so they kind of already have those basic skills of this is what I use for technology at home. And now my job is to say, okay, now we're going to use it in the classroom. So I mean, I don't think that for me, it's any more difficult. I think it actually is a lot easier. Um, you know, I love being able to just at the click of a button, push an assignment out to all of my students. I don't have to make copies. I don't have to have somebody watch my kids so I can go down the hall to make those copies. You know, so it's it's a powerful tool for these kids, especially because we are in a digital age, um, you know, and it's it's as accessing something that they're familiar with. So you recently, uh, you and I, kind of crossed paths, although we never actually, I don't think, caught up with each other out in Seattle at Hack the Classroom. And everybody out there was talking about this thing called, you know, five ways to use OneNote by a real teacher. And I started looking this up and you've got this pretty neat video that again, we're going to put in our show notes here. But tell us a little bit about the experience working with Microsoft Education, putting this video package together, getting to be in a video with Sonia. Tell us a little bit about all of this. And and um, how did it come around and, and what can we expect to see in this video? Um, that was a wonderful experience. I cannot say enough how wonderful um, the people at Microsoft Education are. I mean, they are really invested in us as teachers and they're completely invested in our students. Um, and it was a great experience. Uh, Sonia um, asked me to come out a few days early and she goes, I, I think it's really important to share these tips to get started because sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming. Um, if you just kind of jump in the deep end uh, and try to tread water, because there's so many things in the technology, um, especially with OneNote and Sway and Mix. And so um, she had just asked me to give kind of the tips that we get started with. And these are the things that um, I do every year at the beginning of every school year um, to kind of get them started, um, projects to uh, help them learn independently all the tools that OneNote has. Uh, but it was just a great experience. Um, we spent the day filming and, you know, Sonia, um, you know, she's she's fantastic. I love her. And I think it's also important to know there that there's a ton of resources on the education.microsoft blog, not only for people that are new to Microsoft Education, but also are looking to go that extra step further. You know, if they want to become a Microsoft for Education trainer or just an MIE, I don't mean just, but an MIE, um, there's a lot of different things that you can find there. I'm finding new resources all the time when I prep for these podcasts. What kind of things do you look for on that uh, education.microsoft.com website? Well, I have really started to get into the like Skype virtual field trips. Mm. Um, we had done a lot with Skype last year for like Skype-a-thon and Mystery Skype, but we've actually scheduled one with our um, CoTalk group that we're going to do our first virtual field trip. You know, and so the kids are really excited because they've used Skype last year and now, you know, now we're taking it a step up and we're going to be taking a field trip. But I really like the educator site. There are so many ways to connect with people. There are great start out lessons, um, you know, and when you create your account, you know, earning those badges is kind of like, oh, you get one of those and you're like, yay, I feel accomplished. But it's a it's a great resource. And especially if you're going to do um, OneNote, the blog and then OneNoteForTeachers.com is another great place to get started. Well, you, you had just mentioned Skype, and I want to remind everybody again that the Skype-a-thon is going to be coming up soon here on November 29th and 30th. I believe last year they did over three million miles of Skyping back and forth, and I know they're setting a goal this year for like five, mile, five, five million miles. Um, w do you have an opportunity to, to do these type of activities with your students and if so, what do you think about doing these things and reaching out to other classrooms? Oh, they love Skype, Mystery Skype. 
Um, that is what we did for Skypeathon last year. We had Mystery Skyped with uh, five classrooms and then actually had done a Skype session with uh, Mike Tollison and Ari Shore. They were in Norway. Um, and they, they cannot wait for Mystery Skype because, you know, it's, it's a game. And who doesn't love playing games? But it's also a game that's accessible for them. You know, they can get on the surface and pull up the map and ask questions. And I think it's that kind of also competitive element, you know, whoever gets their first wins. Um, but we we love playing Mystery Skype. We connected with some great classrooms. And this year we're hoping to connect with some international classrooms um, to kind of do a cultural exchange. But, um, you know, Skype in the classroom and the skype -a is just a great way to kind of get started. Um, and the resources out there, like the Mystery Skype uh, OneNote is where we started. I got all of my information and set things up from there. So with everything going on, Lauren, I'm sure there's places that you go for help, for inspiration. And I know we have our, our Microsoft Education sponsored tweet meets on the first and third Tuesday of every month. But if I was looking to get some help and guidance using working with technology and special ed students, what are the hashtags that you follow and what other resources could you recommend we look towards just for a little bit of help and a little bit of a uh, little bit of advice? Well, I think following, um, you know, the dyslexia hashtags, especially um, because a lot of these sped students have, you know, kind of issues with their reading that mimic dyslexia, but that may not actually be what their diagnosis is. Um, following other um, special ed educators on Twitter, um, NCCE has some great resources out there. And then connecting with people just in your district. Um, I like to follow other school districts in the area because there's some great teachers that are doing some great things and they're close to me. So if we wanted to collaborate quickly, we could, you know, reach out to each other, um, meet and then kind of go from there. But um, I think the other great thing is just connecting with people through blogs. There are some great blogs out there um, that have great tips to get started um, working with, with special ed students. And I think some of them, I like that they address the emotional part um, that is, is kind of part of your um, experience with them on top of their education, but there's some great ways to get started. Again, we're talking to Lauren Pittman here from Georgia and uh, looking forward, of course, to meeting you again out there in San Antonio at ISTE. I, I'm so looking forward to it. But before we get there, before we have our reunion with Flopsy, I want to know if you are ready to take the MIE Spotlight Series podcast challenge questions. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. All right. All right. Here is a series of questions designed to make you think designed okay. to make you smile, and designed to put you on the spot. If you're <laughs> ready, here we go for you. Number one is the easy question, but why are your kids so awesome? My kids are awesome because they every day, um, you know, kind of what we call go into battle. Uh, they work so hard. They, um, you know, they, they meet the challenge every time, and they inspire me to keep doing what I do so that I know that, you know, from here on out, the experience that they have, I'm able to give to another group of students every year as they come up. You know, I got to start making these questions a little bit harder. MIEs are absolutely <laughs> amazing at these things. All right, here's the next question here. Um, I'll make this a little bit harder. What is your best teachable moment ever? Oh, my best teachable moment was last year. Um, one of my dyslexic students who at the beginning of the school year could only functionally read three words per minute. Um, and this, it's on instructional level text. So I think one thing for resource fed students that people should um, know is that we don't um, meet them on grade level. We actually come down to an instructional level. So he was on a K-1 instructional level. And at the end of the school year, our EIP teacher came in to do um, grade level fluency with him. So she was like, oh, we're just going to leave the door open. Um, you know, it's only a minute. And he read 38 words per minute beautifully with no errors. And I am sitting at my desk like ugly crying. She's ugly crying in the doorway. And our kids are looking at us, you know, like we've grown three heads. I mean, one of my kids even came up and patted me on the back and they're like, are you OK? You know, but that was the biggest moment last year. It was him reading 38 words per minute on grade level text. Um, and that was that was one of those things that I'll never forget. That's uh. That's pretty awesome right there. But I still have one more question. <laughs> okay. 
Um, this is kind of an easy one, but uh, what advice do you have for teachers out there who are getting started or maybe are using Office 365 for the first time? And that could be any app, anything. But for teachers who might be sitting here kind of confused, kind of lost, what advice do you give people when they want to just dive in? I think find one thing that you want to focus on and figure out how to pull the other pieces in. So I started out with OneNote and then I actually replaced all of my paper pencil tests with Sways. Um, so let's say we were doing a novel study. Uh, we did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and my students would have to create a chapter summary for every chapter and then turn it in at the end of the book. And that was their test. Um, I could grade it on things like grammar, um, word choice, spelling. Um, but it was in a way that was relevant to them. And plus, let's be honest, you know, paper pencil tests for them are super challenging, especially multiple choice. Um, so find one thing that you want to start with and then slowly start incorporating the rest. And then by the time you do that, you'll realize, oh, you know, I've already kind of set everything up and I'm ready to go. And that's a pretty cool answer. Um, and I love the idea of taking the paper and pencil and moving it over to Sway. And, and, and I'm sure you're aware of this. If you're listening, maybe you don't. Sway recently in the last couple of weeks came out with some really neat brand new features. And uh, we'll, maybe we'll put some of the links in, in, into the show notes here. Um, but yeah, check check that stuff out. There's a lot of neat things happening here as the school year goes by. Microsoft Education is constantly updating things. Um, there isn't a time where I turn on any of the Office apps and I get, hey, we have updates. Please reinstall. And I just know that they're constantly making things better. Um, talking today to Lauren Pittman. Of course, you can find her over at Pittman's Place on this on the Twitters and on the Skype. Um, Lauren, if anybody wants to reach out to you... Um, you know, where, I guess I shouldn't say where can we do that because we just gave out your, your Twitter account, but are you open to having people do mystery Skypes and stuff with you and your kids? Absolutely. Um, we're on the educator site. Um, you can find me, Lauren Pittman. Um, the best way to reach out to me is Twitter. I'm one of those horrible people that has like 500 <laughs> unanswered emails because <laughs> I just don't answer them. That sounds really bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, connect with us, get started. Um, I would say to another great person, if you're looking to get uh, started with OneNote, is to follow Mike Tollefson yeah. on uh, Twitter. He's the one who, uh, he and his crew created the learning tools. So if you're looking for a base start, that would be great too. Um, but please reach out to me. This is something that I love. I love helping people get started. And I want your kids to have the same experience that my kids had with those aha moments. So again, that's uh, November 29th and 30th. Maybe you can reach out and uh, have a Skype call with an amazing classroom out there in Georgia. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope to have you back on the show and I'll see you out there at ISTE. Thanks so much. Looking forward to it. One more time, we want to say a great big huge thank you to Lauren Pittman for coming on the show. She's doing amazing things in her special education classroom and providing great resources on education.microsoft.com. Of course, you can find her again on Twitter at Pittman's Place, and I'm sure she'd be interested in Skyping with you and your classrooms. It will be a great time. Don't forget, one more time, we have the skype coming up here on November 29th and 30th. You can do all the information there over on skype And again, Again, don't forget, we have our first and third Tuesdays of every month, our official Microsoft Education Tweet Meets. I hope to see you there. They have been a blast the last couple times. Of course, there's several great ways that you can participate in this show each and every week. You can find me on Twitter at TeacherCast and join all the great things happening at Microsoft Education over at Microsoft underscore EDU and at OneNote EDU. All of our shows are going to be located over at TeacherCast.net slash MIE Spotlight. And please, 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 if you've made it all the way to the end of this show, go on over to iTunes at TeacherCast.net slash slash M-I-E audio, leave us a review, rate us, and especially subscribe to this show on all your devices. We would appreciate the help. This and all of our videos, of course, are also going to be found over at teachercast.net slash M-I-E video. We hope you subscribe on our YouTube channel as well. If you're interested in being on the show, you can, of course, email us at feedback at teachercast.net. We will make sure that you have an opportunity to get your show and your students spotlighted. On behalf of everybody here at Microsoft Education and the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury saying keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.